So in today's video, we get to smash some more miniatures, and we'll be testing out the standard grey resin by Sunlu. So let's get on with the smashing. So full disclosure, Sunlu did provide this resin free of charge for me to test out and see how it works. So the first thing to talk about with this resin is what it comes with. It's a little bit different than all the other resins I've been using. Instead of the usual type of bottle, you get something a little bit different. And also included with it, you get the actual filters as well, which is fantastic. So the amount of times I've had to go and empty my vat because I've either had a failed print and you want to filter it, and then I end up using a funnel and having to use another type of filter, or you've run out of the filters that come with the 3D printers, it's just a nice little inclusion. A lot of people who are doing this a lot will probably already have some kind of permanent filter that they're using but it's just a nice to have having those extra filters included with it. Moving on from, I guess, the more generic stuff and onto the quality of the print. And I've got to say, I was really impressed with it. I guess I expected it to be pretty good, but considering this is their more standard resin, it's not anything fancy, it's the more budget entry level stuff, it actually got some really, really good quality prints. I didn't have any soft details, I didn't have any lost details or anything like that. All in all, this is as good as any other type of resin that I've been using in the past. There's no downsides or when it comes to quality. Moving on to how well it takes paint, getting a primer on there, very easy to do. Again, didn't have any issues, so no complaints there. And then once you start to get that paint on it, you can really start to see those details start to pop, like hopefully you'll be able to see in the video right now. So when it comes to quality and ease of use for actual miniature painting, really fantastic. It gives some great quality print and it's easy to get paint on there. Moving on to the more anecdotal stuff, and that is the smell. I didn't find any like horrendous smell or anything like that. It smells pretty much like all of the other resins I've been using. It wasn't any better, it wasn't any worse. Could still smell it if you walked into a room after doing a print, so you know, bear that in mind. But it wasn't something that was obnoxious or anything like that. And before we move on to the actual stress test of these things, getting them off the printer, I didn't have any issues with things like failed prints. It worked with all of my standard settings that I've been using for things like the Elgu ABS light resin. Didn't have any issues with them failing. Easy enough to get off the printer and easy enough to snap them off the support as well. So actually that cleanup process, nice and easy. So now that is over and done with. It is time to move on to the smash tests where we take it over to the shelf behind me, drop them and just see what happens. Now I am not expecting much from these. As I said, this is their standard resin. It's not like a flexible resin. It's not advertised as being durable or anything like this. So my thoughts are they will pass the first test, but I reckon they will probably all break on the middle test. I can't see them getting too much further. If they do get to the top shelf, then I reckon they're probably gonna smash at that stage and they will definitely get destroyed by a D&D manual, but <laughs> let's find out. Right, here we go. So we'll get onto the drop test now. So the height, for those of you who haven't seen in these videos before, Bottom shelf is 20 inches, middle shelf is 34 inches high, and the top shelf is 62 inches high. And the idea behind that is you've got like a, I guess like a coffee table height, and then you've got like your normal standard tabletop height. And then you've got like, if you've got something that's decorative or if you're carrying it and you drop it because you're freakishly tall at that height, who knows? So let's get on with it. I printed off three identical miniatures by a one page rules. The reason I went with these are, is they're all one piece. So they're not like in little bits where the glue could come off. And there's loads of bits, they're quite fragile, like these swords and tails and everything like that. So, get three lives, we go through each of them, see if they can pass the test, and then move on to the next level. First level. Survived. Survived. Oh. Okay, so we've got our first death on the first level. So now we are moving on to the second level, which is, I guess, almost like your tabletop height, a little bit taller than it. This is where I think they're both gonna die now. Okay, so with that one, we've got one death and we've got one that's gotten through to the final height. So let's see if it can survive. Oh, and he died. Okay, so as expected, they didn't pass the test, unfortunately. They did better than what I was expecting them to. So literally one of them got through to the final height, which is always good. Final height literally ripped him off at the knees. One thing that's relatively impressive is they actually, you know, most of these broke around the feet area. A lot of these sort of like overhanging details, like his tail, for example, horns, arms, they all stayed on there. Only one of them had a sword breakage, which is this one here. And to be fair, the sword is a really, really thin bit. Now let's have a look then. It's harder to test, really. You can't test it particularly well, but how much they flex before snapping and how. Okay, actually, put in, 
I mean, you, you could probably tell by the word grunt there. Put a decent amount of force in there to try and snap off the arm, and actually it stayed on really well. I'd imagine these thin bits like the tail, actually. Okay, there we go, Ooh, and then it exploded. And the sword, the sword snapped really easy. I would say though, that they really lack flexibility. It's like, as I was pushing it then, there was almost zero flex compared to something like the LGU ABS light resin. However, they don't just snap. So the Elgu standard resin that I started off printing with always felt like it had no flex and it would snap. It was really brittle. It was quite easy to snap. These, although they've got no flex, yeah, they take a decent amount of force to snap them. So although they didn't pass all of the levels on the drop test, they did very well. I was quite surprised to see one of them actually got through to the final level. And actually, they feel really durable. They don't feel brittle. They just don't have any flex. So pretty impressed with it so oh my god that bounced apparently they bounce as well so all in all i've been really impressed with this resin it gives some fantastic details doesn't smell obnoxiously bad which is always a nice thing and actually from the drop test there it did better than i was expecting it certainly feels a lot more rigid like it like i said it doesn't really have any flex but actually that's pretty good However, one thing to note is things like these uh, really, really thin bits, like the swords, for example, if you do knock them and like kind of twist them, then they are going to snap off a lot easier. They did survive the drop test though, which was, you know, always a bonus, but just bear that in mind. If you've got a lot of models that have like long spears, lots of fragile swords and stuff like that, it's just worthwhile bearing in mind. If you're after a budget resin, then this is probably worthwhile having a look at. I've been relatively impressed with the results. I like the fact it comes with the filters. Gives really good quality, decent rigidity as well. So if it's something that's a larger sculpt, for example, you're not gonna have any issues. And to be fair, even things like these little miniatures did a really, really good job of surviving the stress test going through there. And actually, they feel pretty strong when I'm trying to break them with my fingers. So that's always a bonus. Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, the like and subscribe button. I'll be trying to do loads of these different resin tests as well in the future, just to kind of give you guys an idea of or what passes different heights, what gives flexibility, what's more rigid, and hopefully that's gonna help you in deciding what resin to get for your 3D printer. In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you soon. And thank you, Sunaloo, for sending this over for me to try out. Really enjoyed it.